In this video, we are going to take a look at a heartless and scandalous incident that happened in Jamaica in 1999, when 39 homeless and mentally ill people were kidnapped from the streets of Montego Bay and dumped near a mud lake in rural St. Elizabeth. But how did this happen and why? What were the consequences for the victims and the perpetrators? And what does this tell us about the state of human rights in Jamaica? Stay tuned to find out. Welcome back to Elite Jamaica, the place you come to learn about Jamaica and Jamaicans. If it's your first time joining me here, consider subscribing to the channel so that you'll be one of the first to be updated whenever time I upload new videos. Montego Bay or Mobe is the second largest city in Jamaica and a popular tourist destination. It is known for its beautiful beaches, resorts and nightlife. But behind the glamorous facade, there is another reality, poverty, crime and homelessness. According to a 2018 report, there are over 2,000 homeless people in Jamaica, and about 500 of them live in Montego Bay. Many of them suffer from mental illnesses such as schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, or depression, and lack access to proper care and medication. They are often ignored, stigmatized, or harassed by society and the authorities. In 1999, the situation reached a breaking point when the Jamaican government at the time decided to clean up the city of Montego Bay for a visit by then US President Bill Clinton. On the night of May 22, 1999, 39 homeless and mentally ill people were rounded up by city officials and police officers and were forced into a truck. They were told that they were being taken to a shelter, a hospital, or a medication center. But instead, they were driven for over two hours to a remote area near a mud lake in St. Elizabeth and left there to fend for themselves. Some of them had their hands tied with ropes and some of them were injured or bleeding. They, they had no food, water, or clothing and they had to face the dangers of the dark, the cold, the mud, and the wildlife. The next morning, some of the victims managed to find their way to the nearest town, Santa Cruz, where they were spotted by local residents and journalists. They told their stories of horror and abuse and exposed the scandal to the public. The media dubbed them the Mobe 39 and their plight sparked outrage and sympathy across the country and the world. So, here are some of the stories of the Mobe 39 that we found so far. Vernon Gibson was a veteran of the US Army who saw combat in Vietnam. He was one of the survivors who managed to avoid running down a slope into the dark, which could have led him to the mud lake. He raised his hand and said, Don't move, make a wait until daylight. When day broke, they realized they were almost at the edge of the the mud lake. Another homeless person, Whitley Findlater, was another survivor who was told to get into the truck as he was being taken to get medication. He noticed there were over 25 other people in the truck with their hands tied with rope. Later, they tied up his hands also, saying he would jump out of the truck, so he sat down. A mentally ill person who was not named was found wandering on the streets of Santa Cruz, covered in mud and blood. He said he had been taken from Montego Bay by men in a truck and left near a mud lake. He said he had to fight off crocodiles and other animals to survive. He was taken to the hospital by a good Samaritan. A woman who was also not named was found in a state of shock and trauma near the mud lake. She said she had been sleeping on the streets of Montego Bay when she was grabbed by men in a truck and dumped near the lake. She said she had no idea where she was or how to get back to Montego Bay. 
She was also taken to the hospital by a good Samaritan. These are just some of the stories of the 39 people who were kidnapped and dumped near a mud lake in rural St. Elizabeth. It was a scandalous incident that violated the human rights of the homeless and mentally ill people in Montego Bay. The Jamaican government, led by Prime Minister P.J. Patterson at the time, later accepted responsibility for the incident and compensated the victims with a monthly stipend of a measly 1,500 Jamaican dollars are about 20 US dollars. The city officials and police officers involved were suspended, but no criminal charges were filed against them. The incident also prompted the government to launch a national program to address the issue of homelessness and mental health, and to provide more shelters, clinics and social workers for the needy. However, more than two decades later, the problem of homelessness and mental health in Jamaica remains unsolved. Many of the Mobe 39 are still living on the streets, or have died from illness, violence, or neglect. Some of them have never received their compensation, or have lost it to theft or corruption. Many of them still suffer from the trauma and the stigma of the incident, and have not received any counseling or support. And some of them have never been reunited with their families or friends, who may not even know what had happened to them. The story of the Mobe 39 is a tragic and shameful chapter in the history of Jamaica. It reveals the harsh realities and injustices that many homeless and mentally ill people face in the country and around the world. It challenges us to question our attitudes and actions towards the most vulnerable and marginalized members of our society. How do we treat them? How do we help them? And how do we respect their dignity and rights? I hope that this video has shed some light on this important and overlooked topic and has inspired you to learn more and perhaps to get involved in helping the marginalized and less able in our society. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and family. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to get notified when I upload new videos. And if you have any comments, questions or suggestions, please leave them below. I would love to hear from you. Thank you for watching and see you next time on Elite Jamaica. Don't forget to drop a like and a comment. Don't forget to subscribe.